。亲爱的听众朋友们，晚上好，欢迎收听西雅图中文电台2020年美国大选的特别节目。今天我们非常有幸的请到华盛顿州嗯、呃、众议员第四十一选区的候选人。嗯、呃，他也是现任的众议员 ，Tana Sam。嗯 ，Good evening， 嗯、uh, ，everyone， and welcome to Chinese Radio Seattle 2020 election special program. Tonight we are very honored to interview with Tana Sam. She is the current、uh, state representative. Legislative District Forty One, Position One, and、uh, she is seeking re-election.、Uh, welcome, Tana. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here.、Um, so uh, let me uh, briefly introduce Tana.、Um, Tana Sen earned、uh, her master's degree in public policy and、uh, administration from. Columbia University, and、uh, she worked for 15 years in government relations and、uh, communications in the private, nonprofit, and、uh, philanthropic sections. Before she became the Mercer and the Mercer Island City Council member, and Tena is a working mom with two kids. She is currently a state representative. For For the district forty one, ah,、uh, very bright, very very shining resume. Ah,、uh, we are very honored to have Tena with us. So my first question is, ah,、um, uh, when you、uh, began your master's、uh, program at the Columbia University, did you plan to be a professional politician? <laughs> No, I really never did.、Oh. Uh, I had been an、uh, education、uh, major in college, and then、mm. I got interested in education policy, and then in urban policy, looking at how the built environment affects education. So, you know, people were hungry, or they didn't feel safe going to school, or how were things impacting、uh, families and communities. So I was looking much more about community development and community strength than I was at being a politician. So that was a、uh, it surprised certainly surprised me that I became one. Wonderful.、Um, you had been a city council member of Mass Island.、Uh, what did you bring to Mass Island? So when I first、uh, became interested in Mercer Island City Council, there were seven men on the council, and I knew that we had a much more diverse seven white men. I knew we had a much、uh, more diverse community, obviously with women and people of color. And so、uh, I started to work to diversify the city council.、Um, I would say there are three, three or four major things. One、uh, changed Island Crest Way. The main thoroughfare through Mercer Island, from a four-lane road to a three-lane road,、um, for safety, because people were getting in accidents. It was very dangerous, and in fact, my neighbor was killed、uh, right at our corner. So、um, that was a big accomplishment. We also passed the bond and built a new fire station on the south end. It was a had been built in the 50s or 60s, and so we built a new fire station for safety for Mercer Island. Uh, we also started an environmental sustainability committee for Mercer Island that we did not have before as part of city council work.、Uh, and then, lastly, I also created an economic development emphasis for the city. We there had been a feeling that the city council didn't have any role as to how downtown Mercer Island should develop、um, or how we should work with business, but. Knowing light rail was coming, knowing that we were building taller buildings with first floor retail,、uh, I knew Mercer Island needed to look at our policies and work with business、uh, to make sure we built a vibrant Mercer Island. Nice, good job, thank you.、Um, 
You have championed the legislation to ensure children have access to mental health services and the social emotional learning in your schools. What changes did you bring to the children in Washington State in this regard? So when I went to the legislature, I didn't realize that not every school had a school counselor. Um, Mercer Island schools are very lucky to work with the city uh, and the school district to pay for our school counselors. And so I was really surprised to learn that not everyone had, had them. Uh, and they were really important for my family when I lost my mom and my dad and my grandmother all in the same year. And that was really hard on my children who were experiencing a lot of loss. And so I, I started to understand how their teachers were working with their the students uh, when we were away at funerals so that when my kids came back, they felt supported and welcome and not kind of strange. And they had regular groups, um, lunches to meet with my kids and other kids who were struggling. So I, I saw firsthand how important that was. So in the legislature, um, I helped create a social emotional learning work group at OSPI, Superintendent of Public Instruction, our Department of Education, um, to make sure that we were having social emotional learning uh, skills at each grade level. So if you were, were started first grade in Mercer Island and then you moved to Walla Walla, that you wouldn't lose any skills, but we would know that you could continue to build those skills and that every school had those resources. I also constantly introduce legislation to try and fund uh, school counselors at each and every school. Uh, that's a big ticket item, so we haven't been successful on that yet, but I continue to uh, move that forward. And then the last thing in this area, we created a children's mental health work group to really think about children's mental health, not just in the doctor's office, but at childcare and at K-12. So if a child is struggling, you know, they might need the services at school, they might need the services in childcare, they might need the services at their doctor's office. And so we started to look at all sorts of different policies around mental health as it relates to children. And that was a first time focus for Washington. And we've passed, you know, at least five or six bills around that with many different components to increase children's mental health. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, you have served on uh, National Association of Jewish Legislators and the uh, Jewish Foundation of Greater Seattle. Can you tell us the influence of the Jewish community in the Seattle area and in Washington State? Sure. Um, you know, Washington has a really unique uh, history with the Jewish community. There's a lot of Holocaust survivors who live here in Washington and especially in the Sephardic Jewish tradition. So there's Ashkenazi and there's Sephardic. Sephardic is more the Moroccan and Spanish influence and Ashkenazi is more kind of the rest of Eastern Europe. Um, and so there's a very large history of, uh, of Jewish influence here in Washington state. Um, it's really important for me, I'm the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors. And so that's a very strong part of my history and so I bring to the legislator that perspective, making sure that we're fighting anti-Semitism, that we're really um, following up on hate crimes, that we are in making sure that people are recognizing and celebrating uh, diversity and all voices and all communities. And that is just a, a very fundamental component to my work. Um, when we last year had uh, a colleague from the Spokane Valley area who was found to be a white supremacist, um, I called for his expulsion and, and was very vocal about it, even though it was a little bit nerve wracking. Um, so these are things that we have to speak out as a community when we see hate crimes, when we see discrimination, um, when we see intolerance to the, the valuable diversity in our communities. That's great. Um, why is, is it important that uh, you are re-elected as uh, the representative of uh, legislative district 41 position one? 
Uh, thank you for this softball question. So I have loved being the state representative for this area, which covers Renton, Newcastle, Mercer Island, Bellevue, Issaquah, Sammamish, and Beaux Arts Village. And I think my involvement in the community um, around human services issues, around education, um, early learning, which I've been championing, especially around childcare issues, uh, my strong work with our local governments, as I mentioned, we have those six cities, is really critical. Um, and I work well with the business community, making sure that we're all coming together to solve issues. Um, so for instance, a couple years ago, I worked to make sure we had condominium liability reform to help build more condominiums that were affordable to help address some of the affordable housing issues. And that was working very closely with people across the aisle. So um, while I work on very progressive issues, I also know we need to bring the whole community along and we need to really listen, be available, be accessible, uh, and be open-minded to all of those in our community. So I have loved serving our community, being uh, available and proactive in getting out in the community, being involved in the community, and really looking for uh, practical solutions that can be passed and move forward. Nice, that's great. Uh, what will be your highest priority as a state uh, representative? So when we come back to Olympia and into session in January, we're going to be dealing with the impacts of COVID, uh, both on the budget, the state budget, on local and county budgets, and of course on policies that um, we might need to explore on how to help uh, rebuild and um, rebuild the health of our communities and our individuals, of course. So when I look at our state budget, um, I know that we can't just cut services because right now people need food more than ever. They need mental health services more than ever. Um, we need to, we can't cut in health care. We certainly know that our kids and our schools and families are struggling uh, with online schooling. And for me, the biggest thing that I have been looking at and hearing about is the lack of childcare and how that is really hindering economic recovery. Because you can't have a nurse go to the hospital and not know what's happening with her, ch her, his, her children. Um, teachers can't focus on their classroom if their kids are running around in the background. Um, people can't go to the restaurants and the store where they have to work physically um, if they have their children at home. And so we really need to make sure that childcare is affordable and accessible uh, because again, sometimes we used to look at it as just zero to five-year-olds, but now we know that those with kids in elementary school, when those schools are closed, they need childcare as well in order to work. Um, so for economic recovery, for the health of our community, uh, for making sure kids are ready for kindergarten and for the next grade, uh, we really need to address childcare issues. Wonderful. So um, what's your biggest advantage over your opponent in this election? So I have to say that I have been incredibly honored this year to not have an opponent. So oh. this is the first time I'm running for the state legislature without an opponent. Um, I have had nice. opposition uh, every other time, of course, but this year um, I like to think it is because I work in a bi very bipartisan manner, uh, because I'm so involved in the community, um, working on issues that are important, again, around transportation, around education, around housing, mental health all the things that are priorities for our community, uh, including also something we haven't talked about, which is trying to end gun violence. Um, so I like to think that, uh, that I, not only was I lucky, but I scared off enough of the opposition <laughs> that I ended up not with an opponent. Uh, that's, that's a great answer. Um, what do you do as a state representative for the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, yeah. So, in so again, the yeah, the biggest uh, role that I've been playing is around the issue of childcare. 
and around issues of foster care and other things in that uh, human services and early learning space. So making sure that um, if that we're getting parents and their foster kids together with safe visits um, to help create and maintain the bonds between foster children and their biological parents. Um, so looking at different ways and policies that we need to tweak given that we're all home and everything's virtual. So there were a whole bunch of policies that were about being um, providing services in person. And so we've been trying to make sure that we switch everything to online and to continue to have those services. Um, around childcare, again, working very closely uh, with childcare providers and advocating to the governor and on the federal level for more money for childcare so that we can make sure they can stay open even as they have uh, new ratios about teachers to children to maintain safety, health and safety. Um, so making sure that those child cares can stay open, can afford PPE and other protective equipment um, and make sure that child care is there for, uh, for parents as they go back to work. And again, critical for business. So I've been working with business to find out what their child care needs are uh, and working with school districts to make sure that they're communicating with childcare. So if a school is gonna open or they're gonna close, that families have enough information to be able to plan in advance about how to care for their children, um, you know, without it being a surprise and to keep them healthy and again, able to go to work. Uh, so those have been some of the biggest areas that I've been focusing on uh, around COVID. Wonderful. So uh, you are a working mom with two kids. And can you share with us about your family values? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so when I came to the legislature, I was one of just a handful of legislators with little kids at home. And that was just a really important uh, another component of diversity that I brought to the legislature diversity of experience. Um, and again, I think that's why I brought a different focus, a focus on childcare, a focus on social emotional learning, uh, a focus on gun control from the point of view of schools and community safety. Um, and so just having that difference of experience is, uh, is really important. Uh, for me, you know, and I think for most families and certainly for a lot of immigrant families, making sure the world is better for our children is at the heart of what we do and of why we struggle or why we work so hard. Um, and so just constantly thinking about what is going to be important for long term benefits for our kids and our community. So looking at prevention, not just addressing emergencies but going upstream to try and prevent crises before they occur. Um, and just, you know, again, making sure that we are thinking about families, getting them a roof over their heads, food in their bellies, um, a job that is satisfying, uh, and time to spend as a family together, whether it's in the beautiful outdoors that we have here in Washington State and making sure that we're really protecting um, that beauty and our climate so that we have a safe and healthy future for our kids. That's beautiful. Uh, can you say something to the voters in the Chinese community? Yeah, thank you. Um, I would just, of course, ask for your vote. I would ask for your involvement in politics and in the community. Please reach out to me, reach out to your other representatives. Let me know your priorities. Um, I'm so grateful this, for this opportunity to speak with you directly, to let you know a little bit about what I'm interested in, but I'd love to hear from you directly about what is important for you and your families. So please do reach out. Uh, my door is always open, or I guess I should say my email system or my phone, uh, since we're in the COVID situation. Uh, wear a mask, vote, uh, and stay in touch. Thank you so much. And um, um, I'm sure you, you will win the election. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I 
<laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I look forward uh, for for your uh, yeah future accomplishment in <laughs> legislative body and um, um, be a, a, a professional politician, and uh, I hope you can be the Hillary Clinton in Washington State. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, Chao Yan, I really appreciate the, you reaching out and inviting me today. And thank you to Chinese Radio Seattle. And I love seeing your son. Um, I have a, a young college student who is at home instead of away at college. And I have yeah. a high schooler. Um, so as you know, my kids have aged and grown up. Um, so yeah. I understand how we're all trying to make things work from home. So I so yeah. appreciate you taking the time to invite me and have me today. Thank you. So uh, that's it. Uh, All right. And, uh, well, yeah, we well. will. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we will air the interview tonight, and uh, uh, the YouTube on. Uh, yeah, the video on YouTube, and I will send you the link. Thank you. Oh, perfect. I was yeah. just gonna ask. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. Bye, Jayan. Yeah. Bye. -bye. bye.